What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Make sure we're good on our end. We are. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Martin of Never Rest! Give me a hell yeah! Yes, sir! How have you been, buddy? I've been doing excellent. Oh, I love Staying that. busy. Excellent. You know, fighting the depression. <laughs> well, keep mm. fighting that fight. Uh, I have a co-host today. This is my buddy, my buddy Spaz. He's in a band called Failure by Proxy. Uh, he's my co-host today. But Mike, we were jamming, we were jamming uh, uh, the new song, Death Saves. Can you, can you, can you go into not only how cool that music video is, and I know you've been involved in so many cool kick-ass music videos in the past, but why title it that way? Uh, <laughs> so, a lot of different reasons. <laughs> the first thing was, I was like, hey, we should name a song Death Saving Throws. Because I was playing D and D, and it's like you know the moment that your character dies in D and D, everyone is like super stressed. But you have like one moment to to come back, you know. If, and if you do the right thing, you could come back, and your character lives, and then you don't have to like redesign. I'm unfamiliar with the now. rules of Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> but but so so Dungeons and Dragons can be very like. Like, for instance, I'm in a campaign with some friends and it's like a, it's been like two years long. Right. And you only sure. we, we only meet up like once every month. Sometimes we miss out on that. But anyways, you've designed one character for this whole situation. Right. So there's a point in time where, like, if you're having a confrontation and somebody's targeting someone in the group, they can knock you down to where you're dead. But you have one some and I think it's two two chances forever to try and bring this person back to life or your character back to life. Okay. So if you miss out on that, you ro you roll the wrong shit while you're dead, you stay dead. And then you pretty much just have to, to create a new character to, if you want to keep coming to this campaign. Anyways, I thought that was a cool, uh, <laughs> you know, death saving throw it was pretty fun. But then the guys, <laughs> you know, and never rest were like fucking nerd. That's, that's <laughs> fucking lame. And they're like, they're like, how about death saves? And I was like, okay. And then also from that, the, the lyrics in the song are kind of about how everyone is obsessed with their life and scared of death. But in my opinion, when we do die, I think that there's probably something better than what's going on here. You know what I mean? Like, why do we feel all the negative shit we feel? Why do we see all the negative shit, shit we see? I think that there's something better going on. This this is just one plane of existence. And like the song that. is kind of like the song is kind of just like, you know, give like telling you like, you know, you don't have to be afraid to die. Like it's it's a natural thing and death might save who we are when you go to that next plane of ex existence. So, wow. I, I, I love the way I love the way you word that. I know Spaz, who who basically just discovered your band earlier today. I know he's got some questions for you, but I do want to ask okay. one in particular. Uh, obviously, absolute legend, sir. Not only for for uh, for being a member of I Wrestled Bear once. We've discussed this before, and that's going to be oh, yeah. kind of based on one of my questions. But uh, please plug uh, nerding out. Let's let's plug that real quick before okay, before yeah, we go uh, any further because you have a yeah, kick ass right. uh, podcast, dude. Um, also, I do a thing called Nerding Out with Rickshaw, and that's where essentially me and my friends get together, and we talk about what's going on in music. Sometimes we do pop culture stuff, too, uh, but we, you know, mostly just talk shit, you know. Uh, if you see some metal news in the headlines that are that it's worth talking about, it's kind of the show that, like, I would, if I see my friends, we would talk about it anyways, so we kind of make it a point to meet up and talking about it. Like, for instance, the Frankie beef recently uh, between Amir yep. and Alpha Wolf, I went to that show. I am friends with Frankie. And so it was just fun. In a way, it was fun to see <laughs> yeah. Frankie's back, you know, talking shit to other bands and stuff like he that. He does so, that. You, you got to know he does yeah. how he is. He does that. 
Right. Is is it weird sure. though? Like, okay, so the question I wanted to ask is when you when you when you join wrestled, it was very successful band that that you ended up joining and, and made it more successful because of your talent, sir. It, can you talk about the process of that? That's gone. It's over. That was a cool part of my past. But let's create a new band. How does Never Rest get formed? And how did you find all the members and know that they were the right fit to for this group? So essentially, okay, let's, but let's, okay, before I get started with the Never Rest, we will talk about how tough it is to come out of a band uh, like I Wrestled a Bear once. We all decided that we're quitting the band. This band is no more. We all quit. We move on. And a part of me is like, well, I'm going to live normal life now. I'm, I've had my time with music and it was tough and whatever, but. I'm, I'm moving on. And from that, you know, and this is, this is kind of, there's like some behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, I don't even know if they care if I talk about it or if they would be offended, whatever. Essentially, whenever the end of I Wrestle a Bear Once was happening, Michael and Courtney and Mikey, the drummer, they were like, we're all starting a new band when this gets done. We're all starting a band called Spirit Box. And, you know, we're like, yeah, let's do it. And but they didn't they never on, asked you to be involved. Oh, no, this was this was in the van while I wrestled a bear once huh. was on our, our wow. last tour. So originally it was supposed to be me on bass, Mikey, the drummer from I wrestled a bear once on drums. But then once all was said and done. Uh, they were like, we've already wrote the music for the EP. We're going to see how it does. And then we'll, you know, you'll, you'll have to fly to Canada if it ever takes off. So at that, pretty much they put out the EP. They were like, Hey, just to let you know, this is going to be way tougher than we thought. Uh, you would have to move to Canada and we'd have to play local shows and do it like old school style. You know what I mean? Just like a real band would. Right. Sure. So I was like, well, shit, man, like this was in 2017, I believe. So I was like, man, I don't know if I could move to Canada just to just to like just to maybe have the chance to do it again. You know what I mean? Like hmm. I was I was in the band. I was in I wrestled there once from 2000, essentially 2008, uh, but and then officially joined in 2009 all the way to through 2015 and had moved, you know, from Texas to Louisiana. We moved to like Birmingham, Alabama. We moved to California. We toured, you know, all over the world. It was a, you know, looking back at that point in time, we were. Uh, it was a tough time. You know, there was times where I had next to a hundred dollars in the bank account just to like keep touring, just to like make it happen. And so whenever they were like, "Yeah, we want you to move to Canada if you want to be in this band," I was like. I give you guys my blessing. You do whatever you need to do. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could move to Canada to maybe have this band take off one right. day. I'm the fool now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, I took my own journey afterwards. Uh, played with, you know, played with a band called The Worst Intentions. They were like some homies of mine. And those were like my closest friends. But that was the failure of that band. When you're with your closest friends in the world... There's times where when mm. people don't see eye to eye, you never resolve it because you're so close that no one wants to cave. No one wants to compromise, you know? So that was, that ended up being that band. That, and then after that, uh, me and my, the guitarist uh, that was in a band called Surrounded by Monsters, that was, that was my band before I joined I Wrestled Bear once. So, so they kind of came back. They, right, right. Okay. So me and the me and the guy from Strata by Monsters started another project called Phantom Figures. And then we put out an EP. And you know, we lived in different cities at that point in time too. So it was just kind of like, this is just for fun, you know, we'll see we'll see what's going on. And then when I moved to Austin, I a couple of people that I knew from like just talking to them online and they were fans of I Wrestle Bear once. They were like, hey, what's up? I saw you move to us and, you know, just saying what's up. And then 
you know, not even trying to coordinate. I would go to shows and I would see, you know, my, my friend Ramy. This is who I'm talking about. And I would see him. We'd have a beer, strike up conversation. And we saw each other like three different times. And then I saw on his Facebook, he's like, hey, hey we're, we need a new vocalist in our band. It's called Never Rest. So essentially I was like, I am way too busy to do anything like that. But, you know, you caught my eye. And he was like, well, come over and jam. And I was like, I could come over and jam, but I'm going to say that 90% of me is probably going to say no because I'm so busy. At the time I was married, I, you know, like work stuff. I was doing the podcast and all that shit. And then I went over, took my microphone, jammed for a little bit. And then they're like, you want to be in the band? And I was hmm. like, fuck. Yes, I yes, do. I do, dude. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I do, man. I miss it. Come on yeah. back. So. They said, baby, come back. Baby, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So Never Rest so, is formed. Just yeah. like that. And, and something I do want to add to that is like, you can, you know, if you do something like music and, you know, you, you can decide everything in life, you decide stuff about it and you make your own standards but that's never the way it's going to go because, you know, when you are in a relationship with music, sometimes you just need to be around it. Sometimes you just need to do it. And like, you can never just decide I'm done with music because then you're going to feel like shit when you're not doing it. You know what I mean? So that's, I give everybody that advice. Like you could, you could pretend like you're just completely done with music, but you're probably fucking up by not like letting all that shit out. You know right. what I mean? Spaz, I know you have some questions. Go ahead and shoot them. Hell yeah. What's up, brother? I'm a Texan. What up? Uh, born and raised, born and bred, whatever you want to call it. How is no. Sixth Street right now? <laughs> Sixth Street? Honestly, I don't <laughs> go much. Uh, I know that Casino El Camino is a bomb-ass burger spot that I will still show up to every now and then. But 6th Street is pretty ghetto. Uh, really? You know, I, I mean, I will say this, though. Like, I am at an age to where I don't rage anymore. <laughs> and I feel like that's a good spot to rage. You know what I mean? Like, right. if I was in my late 20s and I'm, like, trying to go out and get blasted on tequila and wake up in a stranger's bed... <laughs> Sixth Street was probably still going to be fun for that. You know what I mean? For sure. But but I am kind of a I'm kind of a two beer pass out at home kind of guy now. I get, so. I guarantee you I'm, old, I'm <laughs> older than you, but you know it's like so. How far south have you gone with your band? Like for whether you're touring or just one off shows here and there. I mean, are you guys hitting like Corpus Christi? Are you hitting Rio Grande Valley, um, Houston? Like where are you guys? going into texas era. so since i've been in the band uh since you know i i joined in like august of last year uh we have went san antonio we have went corpus we have went houston we have went lubbock mm -hmm. we have went uh abilene you know so we're we're like tr trying to get out there but it's also the type of thing where like the, it's so hard to read the scene now it's mm -hmm. so hard to to break through in the internet you know what i mean like just everybody's out there trying to get it and uh i think that nowadays you really have to play smarter and not harder like it's it's like obvious i do want to go places but like if you're going to show up to a show where no one knows about your show then it's not worth it you know what i mean like like it's fun to play a show no matter where at but nowadays you have to like hit it hit where it counts you know what i mean right. like like hey like we got uh invited you know we're essentially fucking friends with people in lots of random places and it was like hey uh capra's coming through capra and uh who was it slow pulse capra slow pulse uh, and our homies were like we want you to come drive down which is like a seven hour drive or whatever <clears throat> but it's like but we got a spot for you Sounds good. We're playing in front of Capra fans. We're playing in front of Slow Pulse fans. That sounds great. You know what I mean? Was it wasn't a huge show, 
but for the <laughs> for the amount of people that were there and the impression that we make, I was happy to do it. But there are times where you show up and like literally everybody at the place <laughs> is everybody like, playing. <laughs> it's like everybody there is like there to see the different genre headliner. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like, man, maybe we shouldn't have taken a show where we're not along where we're not aligned with the headliner. You know what I mean? So the people see, that are waiting a, for the headliner. And that's a good point, you know, because somebody like myself being in a band, we're new metal and we've been asked to join with metalcore or scream like name whatever genre and besides mm-hmm. like Tejano or whatever. And it's always like as a band, it's do we want the exposure? Do we want the potential to maybe grab an extra fan or it's just like that's not our scene and you don't want to look you don't want to embarrass yourself you know like if we were to go to right uh, play a show with a, a band that's just straight screaming we're gonna get like laughed out of there you know what i mean right yeah um i i have a two-part question and then and then i'll shut up um okay. first part is was it hard putting that vhs tape in the the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> was that on purpose yeah. Yeah, uh, no, no, that was that was definitely an old, broken ass, you know, like TV VCR combo, and they're like, you know, hey, action, and let's just put the tape in there, and I'm like, oh, shit, shit. <laughs> and it was like literally me just being like, improvise, improvise, get in there, son of a bitch. So, so my second question is, I googled you today, um, okay, and. You guys, and again, I'm Texan, so I, I loved, I love Texas. It, it's like, it's like my flag. You guys are known as Texas Hardcore. Okay. Uh, that's <laughs> like its own little. What the hell? That's some big <laughs> shoes, bro. Like, <laughs> how does that feel? Like, if somebody were to Google you, and it's like, what the hell is Texas Hardcore? And then I saw the video BG had sent it to me earlier, and I'm like, these guys are fucking sick. There's a so, there's mean, a particular sound that kind of comes from Texas, like a southern metal kind of riffage style, that just yeah. generates from that era, and you and you guys have that vibe. It's it's funny that you would you say that because like the 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 thing about that sound, that little tiny bit of twang that we have in our sound, is because all of us were influenced by Every Time I Die. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, wow. So it's, it's funny to think that you're like, oh, this sound with Texas Hardcore, that makes <laughs> sense. But we're influenced by a band from Buffalo that does like a Southern twang. Too. Right. So, yeah. uh, upstate New York. Uh, two, two part question right. on my end. Um, what, what, can we, what can you plug for, for what we can look forward to for Never Rest? The rest of 2024 shows, uh, EP release, I know that you joined less than a year ago, but what can you look forward to? And then my, and then we'll answer that one, then I'll get to the second one. Okay. So with Neverest, uh, we originally were working on an EP, but, uh, you know, it's the type of thing where, like, I'm not... I think we should utilize the internet and market ourselves the best we can. And whenever it comes to like releasing music, just doing singles is the type of thing that everyone's into right now. You know, like you put out a single and you seem to get optimal like attention. Right. And then it starts slowly dying off once it's once it's had its little heyday and then you do another single and it ramps up a little more and then repeat and you know, so it's the type of thing where like I we wanted to do an EP and we eventually want to put this out as an EP. But we definitely have aside from the two songs that just came out, we have like four more that we're working on that are like 90 percent done. We just kind of have to polish them up and start and I have to start working on the vocals. I mean, I've already started working on them, but I have to fucking bang them out. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I would say, and then every time that we're like pushing, almost being done with a single and we're about to send it to get mixed and mastered, we are also trying to set up a video. So every single, single, (laughs) every single, single that we have coming out, we're going to do a video and just try and work it out like that. Uh, also our plan, you know, for all of these singles, which we, we just got done with a run of shows uh that has kept us a little busy 
but you'll see from now on you'll see the video then you'll see the you know the audio streaming you know a little bit afterwards which death saves is coming out on friday on streaming so you will hear that you know on spotify whenever friday wait tomorrow yeah tomorrow and then the next Tomorrow's week Wednesday. You will... oh shit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is what it's like having a job and <laughs> well. anyways yeah friday the it will be out on spotify and then after that you will start seeing playthroughs so we're gonna have drum playthroughs uh for both burdens and death saves we're gonna have guitar playthroughs for both of those we're gonna have vocal one takes for both of those and then we're gonna do repeat the same process with our next single which i'm guessing would be in july so yeah we're gonna try to try to do it like that try to keep it rolling mike did you bring hot sauce uh, I did not bring it with me. Do you want to do? Tri- you don't have to do I, trivia. I know we did it before, but do you, I if, could I could do trivia. I just have no consequences. <laughs> what about what about just pounding pounding a beer with me? The beers are downstairs, also. Okay, well I'll tell you what. If you down to go grab a beer, I need a second to even look up the trivia as it is. Having we done this wait. before, what movie or TV show would you select? That you've seen the most, or if I look up the deepest, deepest, darkest trivia, there's no way I stump you. I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest. I w- I'm a huge X Men fan, and I've been into the the new X Men '97, and I was also very into the '90s show cartoon show, also. So maybe, maybe X Men. I, I I could stump. Let's we'll see. I, I Get him, BG. X Men is doable. <laughs> if you're down to grab a beer, uh, we can make that happen. All right, I'll grab a beer. Okay. I gotta be quick on this. Didn't come up on my on my website. Get him a hard. Get him a hard one, bro. One comes to mind off the top of my head. What is the name of the character, the bad guy they fight in the first cartoon? It's like a giant island comes alive. Uh- but I thought you were talking about movies. You're hitting cartoons. He, he said different. the X-Men cartoon show. Oh, did he? Uh, one second. Oh, that is tough. Let me search again. Uh, are you talking about the Sentinels? No, the one that... Uh, they, they, not... fir- they first appeared as the antagonist of the very first episode. 1992. Oh, look at that Miller Light. <laughs> How's Waterburger, bro? Oh, Waterburger's always good. See, see? <laughs> see, I'm an In and Out guy. Over, and I've had both. I prefer In and Out over Waterburger. But are you from California? No, I'm from Florida. Oh. So I've had many Waterburgers and I've had many In and Out burgers, and I'm, I think In and Out's got the uh, is the way no. to go. They don't have that breakfast on a bun at two o'clock in the morning when after a night of drinking. He does have a point. They Boom. also don't have they don't have ch- uh, a barbecue chicken. Oh, that's on right. Fucking uh, on Texas toast. Fucking a right? Texas toast, baby. <laughs> Mike, I have some. I have some. Uh, it's essentially like the entire X Men universe trivia. Is that is that acceptable? I think I think so. Okay. I hope so. Who, I'm like, bitch now. <laughs> who is believed to be the very first person born with the mutant gene? Uh, apocalypse? Motherfucker! That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. That is correct. Spaz, go ahead and shoot one, one final question off. I'm going to chug and I'm going to ask my last question, but it's a serious one. <laughs> All right. Um, well, actually, can I ask him one trivia? Sure, of course. When was the first animated appearance of the X Men? What year? Ooh, I am gonna say ninety four, and it might have been the Pride of the X Men. Uh, we got you. 1966. Oh, dang. 
Got him. Enjoy your beverage. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to ask you a question, Mike. Last time you were on the show, it's been a while. We d we discussed about the last time you talked with Krista about you, you tossed around ideas of maybe a a you know getting the old gang back together. I, I know it's a long shot, but is there is there ever a chance that maybe you know um, something something happens? Okay, I I've thought about this recently too, and. I can't, it's like, I, it's going to be a tough job to do, but I think I am the guy to try and make it happen. I love you know that. What I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it's going to go, uh, but I think that I will try. I will, re I will start reaching out to everyone and see how it's going to go. But I will say, a tough one it's a it's a tough uh fix to try and make that happen maybe so. you could do like a 15 year anniversary tour for it's all happening yeah i mean you know it's the the hardest part is everyone you have to remember that everyone quit steven's band I gotcha. so at, at this point in time the hardest part to try and fix is Hey everyone, if you forgive Steven, will you allow him mm -hmm. to take uh, you know, offers? <laughs> and would you trust him to divvy us up money to play those shows? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like super hard to be to be like the one guy that's in charge of financial situations. You have to forgive and r learn to retrust with the money. You know what I mean? Is, so. is there any chat earlier asked the question, does Mike get any royalties from, from I wrestled of any kind? So, okay. I do. It's, it's very minimal be at this point in time uh, because, you know, streaming world is not kind. They do yeah. not pay you huge chunks of each stream sure. so me being just the bass player sure there was times <laughs> there there was a couple of records i think where it was all split equally but then it started getting you know a little convoluted because certain members were like well i did this and i did that and it got to a point where it's like someone someone was like well if you did this and you did that maybe we should break it down more and then when we did break it down more certain people got more and certain people got less and i think that the person that brought that up ended up getting fucked <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. it was just like should have left it alone just keep it equal but... <laughs> just keep it equal if you're in a band yeah. just make it fair yeah i got one but i, I can do I get see... one more question in after but sorry, I, go ahead. sorry, sorry uh, uh i do see I do see like every few months, I think it's like every six months I, I get something and it's like 10, $10 here, $20 there. You know what I mean? But that the main thing about that is the original EP was completely owned by f the three members that started it. So Krista, John and Steven. And the, and the thing is before you have a label and you have your EP up, it all goes to you. Mm. So they still probably make a huge, not even, not even saying huge, but a pretty decent chunk more than the rest of us that joined after they were signed because everything you get after you're on a label, they get it. The label gets a cut, you know what I mean? So it's like, and they get so the that's why I, right, right. So that's why I would get minimal compared to people that were in the band from the beginning. So, so well, my last question. Yes, Pat, last Pat. question. Okay. And I have a last question and a statement. Last question is, are you ever open to collapse with unsigned artists? Regarding vocals or... or... Vocals, ba vocals, bass, or whatever. I mean, like somebody like me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up straight up on vocals. Your screams, your vocals are fucking impeccable, brother. I, I, I love them. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, I am pretty open to do uh to do something, you know, with people if it's the right thing. Right. Um, right now though, also, I I didn't get to this, but me and me and our guitarist Dustin in Neverest have started the idea of us doing covers also, and so we're working on some covers just to have some content that keeps coming out on top of the new songs that we're working on. But yeah, but if it's right. the right, you know, the right song, the right fit, I would be down to work on some shit. And then my last thing, the statement is Southern hospitality. Like I said, I'm a Texan. If you guys are ever in Northern California, hit me up. I will fucking give you guys a big ass barbecue steak, ribeye dinner, whatever, invite you over to my house, house spoil the, you. the band. And yeah, spoil you just because <laughs> I know how, as an artist, I know how hard it is and, who likes eating fucking RV food and all that shit? I will cook you guys dinner and let you guys relax here and just fucking chill out. So awesome, hit man. me up. Appreciate it. For sure. Oh, yeah, appreciate it. Yep. I'm down. If you guys haven't already checked out Never Rest, please do. This man's a legend. Sir Michael Martin, absolute pleasure. Nerding out with Rickshaw. If you have not heard that and you podcast or your thing, please check that out. But uh, yeah, the also, new. Th- I will. I will say before we get done uh, nerding out with Rickshaw, we are doing it more often here lately. Most of the time on Thursday at about 5 to 6 uh, p.m. Central time, we do live shows. And I do have some guests lined up to be on that. Also. Yeah, you know a lot of so, people in industry, so I imagine it's worth tuning in to see the, see those guests for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's going to, I don't know. And like, I really like having guests on because I don't ask the normal questions. Like, you know, I don't, <laughs> being someone on this side of things, I'm like, I'm not interested, you know, in the technicalities of what you use to record <laughs> your, your guitar sound and stuff. I'm like, yo, when's the last time you shit your pants? You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's, enter- it's an entertaining show for sure. Well, Mike, it's always a pleasure, brother. Uh, we've been buddies for a bit, and I, I love everything you do, man, uh, especially especially the new stuff for, from Neverest. Uh, and uh, please come to California, not only Southern, but to Northern, so you can hang out with Spaz and get and get your belly Fuck stuffed. Yeah. But, uh, bro, it's, yeah. uh, it is always a pleasure, sir. Please keep doing the Dude. same thing. And uh, if anything ever happens... Steven and Krista, please let me know so we can plug and, and do whatever we can to help sell out those shows, dude. That would be amazing. Uh, Good luck thank to you, you so All much. The best. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, fucking everyone, please check out Never Rest. I want, I want this band to do well, but the internet has to love it first before we can take it out on the road. Yep. So, but thank you, BG. Thank you, Spaz. My pleasure. Uh, Take care, brother. Cheers, uh, and thanks again, Mike. Michael Martin of Never Rest! Give me a hell yeah! Yes! Thanks, buddy. Cheers.